Hi again. This is a really quick demo on how to create on call policies in one of time. When things go wrong uh, in a company, when you have certain resources not operating the way you like it to operate, you want team members to be alerted. And this is where on call policy comes in. Uh, to begin, like to begin with, I've already created a monitor for you. It's it's of type manual. Uh, it's currently operational. It doesn't do anything. It's a static monitor. But you could create a monitor that like that would monitor websites, APIs, IP addresses, ports, anything really. Uh, we've done a, a video on monitoring, and that's out on YouTube as well on our channel. Feel free to check that out. Uh, so this is this monitor is created already. What I'll do next is I'll add my team members to this project. Uh, so you know, like you know, uh, how are they alerted? You know, and how do we rotate between them? So click on more. Click on project settings. Scroll all the way down. Click on teams and members. I have multiple teams here. I could create a new team if I like. Um, for this demo, to keep it simple, I'll go ahead and add them to the members team. So I click on view team. There are no members so far. There's only one, one person in this project, which is me, and I am in the owner's team. I'm not in the members team. So click on add a member, and I could say user, or I could say Bob, one up .com. Um, and I'm currently Alice. We've added Bob. Uh, I can say Charlie. I can say Delta. I've invited all of these users to this team. What I'll do next is I'll create a, a very simple on call policy. And this on call policy would, like, it would say when. Um, when an incident is created, I want I want some people to be alerted. So I want like you know Bob to be alerted, for example. So I click on create an on-call policy. I could say alert Bob only. Um, click on create. And when I do that, I click on view policy. I have this thing called escalation rules. Um, I click on create a new rule. I could say alert Bob. Um, exactly the same with description click on next and it'll ask me like you know which team do you want to alert I will not select a team because it'll alert everyone in that team all at the same time it'll, it'll ask me like you know which schedules do you want to execute uh, we don't have any schedules so far and this is an empty list I'll walk you I'll get more into schedules later down like later in this video click on users I'll click on Bob I want Bob to get Bob to be alerted and I want to wait five minutes before we alert him again or before we escalate since since there is only one escalation rule in this policy Bob will be alerted and if he doesn't respond uh, to an incident we'll like the execution will stop like the on-call execution will stop uh, so we'll only alert Bob once and only once uh, I can actually change that if I click on edit, like and if I edit this, so I can say repeat this policy thrice if Bob doesn't acknowledge. So repeat this policy if no one acknowledges, and repeat this policy for three times. Click on save. If Bob doesn't respond, it will it will repeat this policy thrice. So it will execute this escalation policy. Uh, wait for Bob to respond. If he doesn't respond in five minutes, he gets another notification. Uh, and this happens thrice. And if he doesn't respond thrice, like you know, the the execution completes, uh, and the incident is left unacknowledged. Uh, to fix this, like you know, we could also create a new rule where we could say if Bob doesn't respond, alert Charlie. if no response from Bob. Click 
click on next and I could say I want to alert Charlie and I could say and I could say like escalate uh, wait for five minutes for Charlie to respond and if he doesn't respond like you know escalate um, so this would like this would mean the exact same thing so when this policy executes Bob will be notified we'll wait for Bob to respond in five minutes and if it doesn't respond Charlie will be notified and if it doesn't notify and if it doesn't respond in five minutes you'll hit the repeat count and Bob will be notified again and this will repeat thrice before this policy finishes executing uh, so this is how you create a very simple on-call policy this doesn't include shifts and rotations and a whole lot more which I'll go into uh, like which I'll go into now so click on more I click on on call duty I have this on call policies which is defined for me so once you have defined an on call policy and this is a really simple on call policy that we've already defined um, let's take it up a bit and we can define rotations and shifts and a whole bunch of that stuff uh, and all of those will happen on on call schedule so if I click on on call schedule I create a new schedule I say alert my development team uh, click on description um, add the schedule and if I click on view policy schedule click on layers I could add a layer and I could define who's on schedule and when. Um, so I could say um, Alice and Bob, for example, could hit save. I could add Alice, which is me. I could add Bob. And if I scroll down, it'll tell me when does like when do you want to start this this schedule? Uh, I could say start it at twelve, just to make this demo a little simpler. So I could I could select twelve, and any time any times you see anywhere in one up time is based on your local time. So if I'm currently in, in the UK and this is why I'm on Greenwich Mean Time. Uh, but if you're in India, you could be on Indian Standard Time. If you're in the US East Coast, you could be in Eastern Standard Time. Um, all of that, like all of that is automatically taken care of by you. So any times you set, you set it in your local time. I want Alice and Bob to rotate every day every once a day so I could select every one day and I want the first handoff to happen on 8th uh, today is 7th of December I want the first handoff to app to happen on 8th so I could select the um, this to be 0 and this to be 0 as well um, zero as well hit save when that happens and if I look at the calendar this is this is what you see so you have Alice the layer starts at 12 today which is the start time um, and you have Alice on call until tomorrow at 12 and then Bob takes over uh, and then he's on call for uh, up until like Saturday there are a few issues with this particular schedule like you know Alice and Bob in the company do not work 24 by 7 uh, they don't work at night so we'll we'll actually fix that so we could say um, they only work specific times of the week so they only work uh, Monday to Friday so like from nine in the morning to let's say six in the, six in the evening yeah six would be 18 18 in the evening and i could do this for five days a week so i could say tuesday tuesday wednesday wednesday thursday thursday and i would add one more for 
Friday. Friday, and I will change these times. So I could copy. Uh, it doesn't let me paste, but I could change it. I could say 18. I could say 9. 18. 9. Uh, sorry, 9 would be 0. 9. 18. So Alice and Bob only works from Monday to Friday on these times and I could hit save changes and you know once I see my my on call it'll, it'll tell me exactly um, when like you know when the on call shift rotates. So if you see next week this is this is what I have. So Bob is on call from 9 to 12, then Alice takes over, Alice from 9 to 12, Bob takes over, and so forth. But I want to create a resilient on-call schedule, like an on-call schedule. I want to create an on-call on -call schedule where I have coverage 24 by 7. For so this, I will add a new layer. So I click on new layer, and I could say weekend, uh, or I could say all round layer, all round layer, uh, and I will add, I will add Charlie and Delta. Now these guys like you know work in, like you know these guys work um, somewhere away from London, uh, so they could work at night. So I would say exactly the same thing. The layer starts at twelve today so I could say 12 uh, I could select zero here hit save the rotation policy happens every day I could change it to week or months or however I like I could change this to zero as well hit save now I have no restrictions here. So if you look at what my what my on call is, it's it's they rotate every day. And um, so first Charlie's on call, Delta is on call, Delta is on call, Charlie's on call. But the idea is like you know they don't want to be on call twenty four by seven either. And this is why we have layers. So layer one will take precedence. Uh, over who's on call at that particular time and then layer two will take precedence so if you look at if you scroll all the way down we show you the final schedule and if you look at the weekly view of this and we click on next week you'll exactly see who's on like you know, who's on schedule and when so you'll see charlie is is on schedule on sunday then delta comes in then bob comes in because he's in layer one it takes precedence over delta and then Alice comes in all the way down. So this is this is how you could create a complicated, well-defined, um, all-rounded on-call schedule. So once I create the schedule, I scroll all the way up. I go click on more, click on on-call duty. The schedule will not execute by itself. This schedule will have to be in a policy. So I click on this, I create a new policy. Let's say um, dev team schedule, dev team policy. If I click on description, click on create. And when I do that, click on view on call policy, escalation rules, add a rule. So rule uh, dev team. Click next, select teams. I don't want to select a team. I don't want to select a user. I want to select this dev team on call schedule that we have defined. So click on next and I can say escalate after five minutes. Click on create. At any one time, if you look at if you look at the on call schedule that we have defined or any on call schedule that you actually defined, at any one time, only one user can be on on call. You cannot have two users on call in the same schedule. If you want two users to be on call at the same time, you need to define two schedules and attach two schedules in the escalation policies. Uh, 
in the escalation rule. Um, so I know this on call schedule is currently uh, in this escalation. Now when, when an incident is created, uh, whoever is on call in this schedule at that time will be alerted. Uh, there is one last thing uh, to talk about. Uh, how are these users alerted? Like, you know, what are the notification methods? Do we call them? Do we email them? Do we SMS them? How do you define those rules? Each user in one of time gets to define how they want to be alerted. Um, they could do that in user settings. So if I click on more, click on user settings, and this is specific to every user in one of time. I have, I have the thing for email notifications. Uh, I could add more emails here if I like. I have SMS notifications. I could add more SMS, like you know, more numbers here if I like. And I have call notifications. I could add more call, like you know, more phone number for calls if I like. We are adding more notification methods. Uh, Few of them are push notifications, webhook alerts, and a whole lot more. So by the time you watch this video, those could already be out there. Uh, once you have defined your, once you have defined your uh, channels, you could click on on call rules, and you can say which method would you like to be notified so you could say when a minor incident is assigned to me i would like to be emailed immediately you could add a rule that could say email me in five minutes if i do not respond or call me in five minutes if i do not respond or send me an sms in five minutes if i do not respond uh, and you could define these rules for different types of incidents so this is how things work in one of time. Every user gets to define how they want to be alerted. All you as a manager care about is if they acknowledge the incident on time or they do not. Um, well, thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for listening.